Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we, right now, this week, we talk about all the new cards in the Way of the Witcher expansion. Today, we're going to be talking about Nilfgaard after Skellige lost, uh, well, yesterday. And uh, Nilfgaard has found a new way to fuck people over, because uh, CD Projekt Red decided to focus more on deck manipulation than Nilfgaard already could. So uh, let's dive into the card to see what these Nilfgaardians, the bosses of the Black Sun, have been up to. And even though I don't like Nilfgaard all that much, I do like those new cards, because they make the game more interesting without it being too oppressive as with their other uh, archetypes. But let's go through these one by one, starting from the lowest provision up to the highest provision. So uh, first up is the Viper Witcher Adept. Because, uh, yeah, we're still going with the Witcher team here. Most of these are gonna be Viper Witches. So, uh, and there we have a small child fighting a goat. So the Viper Witcher Adept at the end of your turn boosts self by one if the opponent has more cards in the deck than you have. So kind of uh, synergizing with the deck manipulation that CDPR was going for with this expansion uh, for Nilfgaard specifically. So a pretty good engine card that just boosts itself as long as you have less cards in your deck than your opponent. And there's a few other cards that actually fill up your opponent's deck. So uh, yeah, this is probably one of the better four provision cards in the expansion because I've seen it used by most of the Nilfgaardian players that I've come up against uh, in this expansion. And now we have the base Viper Witcher, which means that the original Viper Witcher actually has changed uh, in name. I think they're called the uh, Kingslayer Witcher or something like that right now. So the one that reveals and banishes the, card, the top card from your opponent's deck. It's still in there, but it has been renamed. So this one is the new Viper Witcher. On deploy, give Bleeding 2 to an enemy unit. And if you have Adrenaline 6, so 6 or less cards in your hand, you also spawn a copy of that unit that you just added Bleeding to to the top of your opponent's deck so you can either choose to um, well usually go for a low provision card that you put on your opponent's deck or a very high provision card so you can pull it from your opponent's deck with something like Cantarella or swap it around with the I think it's the next card yeah the next card because that is the Viper Witcher Alchemist on deploy look at the top three cards of your deck and put one of them on top and then you swap the top cards from your opponent deck, opponent's deck with yours. So you choose which card you want to trade with your opponent, basically. And if you've done some setup, some setup beforehand, you know what the top card of your opponent will be, and you can manipulate both decks to uh, fit that really, really well. So give your opponent a crappy card and give yourself a very, very good card that you might be able to use in something like Assimilate. Then the next one is the special card, the 5 provision special card for Nilfgaard. Coated weapons kind of doing the same thing. So you damage an enemy by 5 and if you kill it with that 5 damage, you banish it 1 as its first effect. So banish it's gone from the game. And then you spawn a copy of it on top of your opponent's deck. So basically it's gone from the game, but there's a new copy of it on top of your opponent's deck. Possibly, well, the first effect that that has is it just increases the amount of cards that your opponent has in his deck. Um, therefore making it harder to get the cards that they would want. But if it's a very good card that you've destroyed, you can also spawn it on top of your opponent's deck and then pull it again with Cantarella or the Viper School Witcher Alchemist. So yeah, very versatile card, even with just the base five damage and banishing. It's really, really good, but then the spawning uh, effect is even better to my mind. Then the Viper Witcher Mentor, another very, very interesting card. Starts at one power, but on deploy, it sets the power of this card to match the provision cost of the top card in your opponent's deck. This is interesting. So I've seen uh, this misused as well, so misplayed basically. Uh, my opponent played the Guardian, um, so I think that's Cynthia, right? Cynthia, and put the Guardian on top of my deck and then played this card. But since the Guardian was on top of my deck and the Guardian has zero provisions, this card was just destroyed in one go. Uh, so keep that in mind. But on Adrenaline 2, this gets even stronger because if you have two cards or less in your hand, it sets the power of this card to match the provision cost of the highest cost card still left in your opponent's deck. So still, you can manipulate that with... Uh, um, the other cards that we just talked about, you can actually see the Adept in the background of this card fighting the Goat. But uh, yeah, 
very interesting card, especially for six provisions, can get really, really high. I see this go to 10 power all the time, so very, very powerful card. And then basically one of the strongest additions to Nilfgaard, to my mind, Warrit the All-Seeing, basically a blind uh, Witcher guy um, that on the ploy, if you put it on the melee row, uh, you put the highest cost card in your opponent's deck on the top of his deck, on their deck. If you do it on the range row, you put the lowest cost card in your opponent's deck on top of it. So it gives you the option, but if, of course you would want to play this on the melee row, so you can uh, either get that highest cost card out from their deck, or uh, just swap it into your deck with the uh, the alchemist. So very, very strong deck manipulation card that is has seen a lot of play uh, recently because most of the people that I've seen using Nilfgaard actually have this card in this deck because it's just so powerful especially with Cantarella and stuff like that it's just it just drains your opponent's strongest cards uh, and you have that guarantee now because I use Cantarella all the time but you were kind of guessing what it was going to be but with this you know that it's going to be your opponent's strongest card that is still left in their deck and then we have the location for Nilfgaard Gorter Gvate um, which kind of got um, a change in the artwork because the original artwork had like a viper because you can see it on the tower that the the brazier is on uh, there's a snake running along the tower but it the original art had the head of the viper as well but that's for some reason gone now i don't know why they did it, it I, I i mean i know why they did it because we asked around in the uh the partner discord it was because it was a bit too high fantasy but Felt like it fit, but again, on deploy, as with all the other locations, you spawn one of the bronze units that we just talked about. But on order, you move a unit from your opponent's graveyard to the top of their deck. Again, giving them more cards in their deck uh, as a first effect. And then, of course, allowing you to whatever card you put on top there to move that into your deck instead. Or just play it directly. So, uh, again, fitting into that archetype. If you don't play that archetype, it's not that strong, but of course these cards try to work together a little bit into that uh, deck manipulation archetype. And then, uh, Cool Grim, the, uh, yeah, I think this is one of the coolest uh, looking Witcher dudes. Uh, so Cool Grim, Adrenaline 2, at the end of your turn, boost self by the difference between number of cards in player's deck. Decks. That was a, a bit weird, but it starts at one power, but Every time at the end of your turn, and since it's Adrenaline 2, he can do that three times, he boosts himself by the difference between the deck uh, counts. So, for example, if you have five cards left in your deck and your opponent has 15 cards left in their deck because of what you've been manipulating all this time, uh, Cole Grimm will boost himself by 10 at the end of every one of your remaining turns. So if you do this at the point that you still have three cards in your hand, Play Colgrim, he will boost himself to 31 at the end of the match. Because um, by then he will boost himself by 10 three times. So very, very powerful card if you set it up correctly. And your opponent, of course, can't destroy him. Um, and really, really cool card art, by the way. The rates in the background and the foreground. It's another uh, very, very dynamic looking uh, card art. And with the blue shine, it's... Yeah, it's one of the better looking cards in the expansion. But that's not yet the strongest card in this deck. We have uh, some uh, removal. Um, well, no, the Vipper first. I forgot about that. So the Vipper, um, seven points of uh, power, two armor. But at the end of the round, you put this card in the opponent's graveyard. It doesn't sound too interesting, but at the end of every one of your turns, and he's still in the graveyard, it will banish the lowest cost card from the graveyard. So, meaning that it basically clears out your opponent's graveyard. So, basically countering a lot of monster decks, um, a Lippy Skellige deck, for example, the, the Vipper just goes in there and destroys everything. And then, if the Vipper is the only card in the graveyard left, give it Doomed and then summon it to your opponent's random row, which, of course, it's from the... Um, the perspective from your opponent, so if it says your opponent's random row, it comes back to uh, you, if I'm not mistaken. So that gives you those seven points back. But basically it's a, a way of uh, clearing out your opponent's uh, graveyard very, very efficiently. And then the last card is uh, Ivar Evil Eye. And on deploy, he swaps this unit's power with an enemy unit of your choice. So for example, if you're playing against monster. Uh, monsters against those very high power Vi cards or V cards because uh, still don't know how you should pronounce that um, you can swap for example those 23 powers with the 4 power of Ivory Evil Eye basically 
well, shifting around those, uh, that's 19 points in difference in that case, um, which is really, really strong because you gain 19 points, your opponent loses 19 points. So that can be very, very strong as long as you don't do this by um, the point that you have three cards or less in your hands because in Adrenaline 2, he only damages an enemy unit by four instead. So basically losing him his strongest ability, um, which is good for balance wise. So you can't use this as a finisher, but it is a, a towards the end of the round, um, big hit that you can deal. Um, but I've seen this misused by a lot of people. I've, I've had it multiple times that people use this too late and just have the four damage instead. Um, but of course, if there aren't any high power targets for this card to use, it's still better off using the four damage instead, because otherwise you won't get the benefit of this. But very, very cool, uh, strong Witcher card again. Um, that's basically it for the Nilf Guardian additions to Way of the Witcher. But this is not the end, uh, this is the beginning of the discussion. So let me know in the comment section what you think of the Nilf Guardian additions. I think they're mechanically the most interesting cards that have been added. They provide a lot of options and again, making Nilfgaard more the faction that you need to keep on your toes uh, to what you are doing, what your opponent is doing, so you can benefit from that the most if possible. So uh, definitely very, very cool and interesting cards that move away from the more oppressive poison and lock archetypes, which for some reason Syndicate went for uh, instead. So. Uh, let me know what you think about these cards. If you've enjoyed this episode on that, well, let me know in the comment section as well. And give it a like if you uh, really did. Um, and that's it for today's episode. So if you want to check out the other card reviews, we've done uh, Monster Squiretel, uh, Syndicate and Skellige so far. So we've only left with Northern Realms and the neutral cards. So that's going to be tomorrow and the day after that. And uh, then you can check all of them out in one go. So thank you guys enormously for watching. I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye.